September 2021. Accompanied by Liam and Joe from Beyond the Point, we set ourselves our most challenging explore yet. To reach our location, we first had the task of crossing the Medway River in Kent. With the long deserted island of Hoo in our sights, our mission was to explore the impressive abandoned Victorian fort that occupies the island. This is Who Fort. Right, we made it, we're on Who Island. As I said, we've got Liam and Joe from Beyond the Point. Hello lads. Hello. Hello. And we've obviously got this one, I Emma. Made it. She made it. <laughs> Just. And uh, it was actually all right, wasn't it? One, it weren't too bad. bad. Yeah. But uh, this is enough of the vloggy type. We're going to get onto the professional stuff in a minute. So uh, we'll see you when we're over there. After landing our kayaks, we were given the mission of walking over a mile across the rugged island terrain to reach the fort. With the land having previously been used for landfill, this was no mean feat and care needed to be taken with every step. But as the structure came into view, we knew it was worth the challenge. Who Fort, along with its identical sister fort on the nearby island of Darnit, was constructed in the mid-1800s and formed part of the defences of Chatham Naval Dockyard from an invasion by the French. Originally designed to have two tiers of guns, it was discovered soon after construction began that the land would be unable to bear the weight of such a large fort, and the design had to be altered to accommodate just one tier of 11 guns after cracks began to appear in its masonry. Once arriving at the entrance to the fort, we discovered it flooded to the depth of around two feet, which was quite unusual for that time of the year, but we'd come too far now to give up. So we rolled up our trousers and went plunging into the icy cold waters. Right, I'm going in. Oh. I've already established the fact that this is going to go over the top of my wellies, but I'm dressed accordingly. <sighs> yeah, that's cold. <laughs> right, there's some bits of concrete down here. I know it's very dark and you can't actually see. Oh, and there's also some metal. Oh. It's all right, I've got wet wipes. We can have a clean when I get in. Yeah. Right, so I've just made it through the door and uh, needed two hands for that job, definitely. But we're now inside the fort. And as you can see, Stu's there, <laughs> emptying out his wellies, which is what I'm about to do. But this is really smelly. Not exactly a pleasant experience, is it? <laughs> we just did not anticipate the fact that it would be this flooded yeah. this time of the year. I don't really understand why it is, because it isn't normally. I think the best bet is just not to look in the water to see what's floating in it. But I think, I think actually we're all right when we get here, aren't we? But my boots are very, very heavy. How was that experience for you? But wow, look at this place. Look at this place. Wow. Right, anyway. We're going to get ourselves sorted and get on with a bit of exploring. Once inside the fort, we were met with two levels. The upper level housed the guns, with the lower level consisting of the ammunition magazines, as well as the main accommodation facilities for the men stationed here. And this is where we begin our explore. Right, okay, so... We've just taken a look around some of the accommodation rooms. Unfortunately, the majority of them where they would have slept are very flooded and we can't actually get into no. them. But the ablution parts, the urinals, yeah, the, urinals the toilets, and the actual toilets yeah, we actually can get into. They're not intact, but the actual toilets actually are a yeah. pretty good sight. So Certainly a bit of evidence of, uh, of where the toilets used to be. And, so. and made a slate. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is now we're going to throw you over to a few of our scans and a bit yeah, of our voiceover. Always our favourite part of these places. Right, so <laughs> see you in there.
the accommodation provided in the fort appears to have been quite spacious and originally designed for a garrison of 100 men. Home comforts were provided, with all main rooms consisting of a fireplace. A large stove and ovens can be found, as well as hand basins, toilets and slate urinals, which are still partially in situ today. These were all served by rainwater, which was collected from the roof via gutters, which led to large water tanks. Right, okay, so we've just reached three doors, and the three doors always go for the middle one, and we did, mm -hmm. and we we're about to show you the magazine tunnels yeah. with a few of the original lighting uh, boxes. Yeah, the light and glazed windows, which I would have explained in the voiceover to you. And about. the only problem is we've come here and it's very, very flooded. So um, it's it's not the explore we expected, but it's still doable. Yeah. So we're going to go and get on with that and right now. We can tell you as much information at least about it and show you as much as we can. Okay, so let's go, let's shall get we? Down there. <laughs> The ammunition shells and cartridges were also housed on the lower levels and pulled up to the upper gun floor using a hoist. There were numerous magazine rooms and they were lit in a fairly clever way. With there being no electric lighting back then, it was important to ensure that no naked lantern flames came into contact with the stored ammunition. And so each magazine had its own independent lighting passage from which the lanterns could be placed into a glass fronted alcove at the top of the ammunition passengers providing adequate but safe lighting. Remarkably, some of them still remain almost intact today. Right, okay, so now we've reached up in the gun emplacement. Yeah, this is the first level, uh, which held, I think it was 11 uh, nine inch muzzle rifle loading guns yeah i believe <laughs> uh lots to say uh lucky we haven't been drinking because you'll never get that out uh but yeah we, we're just walking around at the moment downstairs was absolutely fascinating but also quite flooded yeah, and we which are was quite a shame well. we couldn't quite see as much as we wanted to do no. or do as much filming or showing you but we have but got plenty of scans we've got plenty of little bits it's only because of the concentration thing yeah. but um, we want to enjoy it and not exactly spend time filming. exactly but we're going to take you to have a look at some of these emplacements maybe try and explain to you a little bit about how they looked back in the day okay the single tier gun floor could accommodate 11 9 inch rifle muzzle loading guns which was half the number originally planned for the fort this floor also had accommodation for additional soldiers, should it have been needed. It's nice to see they actually care a little bit about the well-being of the soldiers here, because uh, they've got all the home comforts, including a fireplace. Each embrasure had a wrought iron shield plate to protect the gunners, with further protection by means of a curtain of woven rope called a mantlet which stopped splinters from the shields causing an injury to the gun crew. The guns themselves weighed around 12 tonnes, with their shells designed to penetrate warships. Each gun sat on a metal rail in the floor and was attached to the walls and ceiling to prevent any excessive ricochet whilst being fired. The gun's ammunition was brought up from the magazines below or a hoist next to each gun. Forts built during this period saw very little action, as there was little attempt by the French to invade during this time. But it is believed that the forts played a big part in being a deterrent, and so still justifies their construction value. Who and Darnet Fort were both disarmed before World War I, from when the Royal Artillery Corps Care and Maintenance Unit looked after them, until the 1930s, when experiments were carried out causing some damage to the magazines. During World War I and World War II, they were used as observation posts, and evidence of these can still be found. The MOD continued to own Fort Hu for many years, although it is now in the hands of the Medway Port Authority and a scheduled monument. Right, okay, so this is the end of our 
little video for today. We want to say thank you to Liam and Joe. I apologise about the wind noise. We're doing it on our phone at the moment. <laughs> Um, but we came it's back been in a, a bit of a rush. We weren't sure if the boats were still going to be here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we've had a really, really good day. So thank you, you two, and we hope to see you yeah. again soon. Yeah, yeah it's a good one. Right, that's so, a mixed so. with Emma Stew and Beyond the Point and Two Island. <laughs> we'll bye. see you again. Bye bye.